I read an interesting article the other day and I thought I would share it with you and just share some thoughts on it really. It's called Seven Surprising Money Rules Most People Don't Know But Should and I will add a link in the description below so that you can find the original article because I'm not going to read the entire thing to you. So it's basically seven points, things that you should be thinking about doing or you should be doing with your money. Um, some of these are really obvious. Some of them I agree with but don't do. And some of them I absolutely do. So number one is sometimes you have to spend more to save more. Now, I absolutely agree with this. It's worth spending more money on something to get something that lasts. Um, and people have this kind of idea of this race to the bottom where you buy something really cheap and if it breaks in a couple of weeks, you just throw it away and you buy another one. If you keep doing that, it will end up costing you more than if you had bought the better thing in the first place. Now, I know that the reason people buy the cheap version is because they don't have the money to buy the more expensive version. But if instead of buying all those cheap versions, you save the equivalent of what you would have spent and then bought the better version in one go, you would have something that lasts longer. And this is how pound shops and Amazon and Timu and places like that make their money. They sell really cheap, but they sell absolute rubbish. And when it goes wrong, a week later you're back buying it again and you keep doing it and you keep doing it and that's how they make their money. Stop doing it. If, for instance, you need a pair of a new pair of shoes, like I'm thinking about buying some new walking boots and I need some new trainers. There are various things that I can do. I can buy really cheap and just keep rebuying. I can save and buy brand new, good quality I'm looking at the middle ground, which is to buy lightly used, good quality. So a good brand that someone's had for a while. Maybe they wore it twice and shoved it to the back of the cupboard. Now they're selling it. Because I still can't afford the really good stuff and I'd have to save for quite a while. But I'm also really into sustainability, make do and mend, reusing things and repurposing things. So to me, if someone's put something on, say Vinted, because it's been in the back of their cupboard or the back of their wardrobe for three years and now they're getting rid of it I would rather repurpose that and use it and it saves me a few quid and gives that item new life I'm always up for um, secondhand clothes and stuff like that and most nearly everything I own is secondhand these days so that's a good one so if you find yourself constantly buying cheap rubbish put aside the money and buy a better version and then you won't have to keep buying stuff point number two don't be too restrictive with your budget and don't try to change it all at once. I recently made a video which was basically about keeping your sanity whilst you are trying to get better at things. And we have this idea that you have to throw all in, you have to do everything at once um, and it becomes overwhelming and then you just give up. If you're trying to change your budget, if you're trying to cut back on certain things, do one thing at a time, especially if it's overwhelming and especially if it makes you want to quit. If you go from being a spender, buying everything you want, even if it is on tick, on credit cards, whatever, and you suddenly say, right, I'm not going to buy anything, give it a week and you'll crack. If you say, right, I'm going to go from having a takeaway every Friday night to once a once a month treat, or instead of going you know, shopping in Primark every Saturday Saturday lunchtime at the weekend I'm only going to go once a month or I'm going to stop going there and I'm going to go somewhere else that's close to home but I'm only going to spend X amount do it gradually build up your good habits gradually as each habit becomes a part of your life and you stop thinking about it and the things that you have restricted you stop missing add the next thing this is how I did it I didn't just suddenly miraculously become this saver you know, I've, I've, I've been the shopping haul person. I've been the load up the, the shopping trolley in Tesco's with as much as I could cram in. Um, and I've learnt everything gradually, mostly from other YouTube channels and other blogs. And I've implemented new things as I've gone along and thought, that's a good idea, but I could give that a go. And I just add that one little thing and then add that next little thing. Before you know it, you've nailed it. So... Be kind to yourself when you're making changes. You can't do everything at once. It just won't happen. 
Um, third one is be beware of convenient methods of payment like auto renew. So I don't auto renew anything. So when I do my insurance policies now every year, I don't allow for the auto renew because then it just becomes a hassle or I'll forget it. Uh, and it'll just take it anyway, even if the insurance price has gone right up. The other thing to say about this title is beware of convenience. Convenience will cost you. There is a reason that convenient things and things that make your life easier are more expensive. It's because they're convenient and, and retailers and other, other re shops that you buy from know that you would rather have the easy life than have to work for it. So they can whack up the price of the convenience and that's where they get you. Things like pre-chopped bag salad, ready meals, uh, delivering or shopping, buying bags at the counter. Why do people still buy shopping bags at the counter? I have a load of bags for life in various stages of decay. I've had some of them for many, many years. They last, they practically do last for life. And it's second nature for me to just take a bag when I go to the store. I always take a bag. If you drive to the store, keep a load of bags in the boots. It's not difficult. I don't know why every time when I'm going in and I'm going to the self-scan, I'm scanning my stuff, everyone's picking up the bags because they're just, be organised. You don't need to pay whatever for a paper bag that you then stick in the bin. We're an absolute waste of money. Why would you raise your, sh your grocery shopping price that much? It's like having it delivered. What are you doing? Next is automate saving money instead of letting it sit in your checking account. Now this is something that I do. So I have as you probably know if you've been watching my channel, you know I am a great lover of spreadsheets. I have a spreadsheet for every aspect of my financial life. I have a spreadsheet for every bank account, every savings account, everything that I have. So I know exactly when everything is due out. I know what's in the accounts. And every spare penny that does not need to be in a certain checking account at any one time, I flip over to my easy access savings. So that means that every spare penny I have is earning interest whilst it's sitting around waiting for me to use it. Now I do have some locked fixed bond accounts. I also have some notice accounts. They have higher interest rates. And like I have um, a Yorkshire Building Society account, you can only make with two, with two withdrawals a year and you get 5% interest on the first £10,000 that you have in the account. So I've used it to keep my emergency savings and the car fund that I'm saving up. So I've allocated that in there and I actually don't need to touch it at all. But I know that if I need it, I can get it. If it's like I need to buy the car or I have an emergency and I can't work and I need some income. So it is there and it is accessible. And by putting away every spare penny into an account which does have an interest rate, it's earning, it's working for me, and it becomes a passive income. I have, uh, I do all my banking on mobile apps. The Easy Access Savings account I use is Tandem, and that links back to all my accounts, so that it's quick and easy for me to flip money from one account to the next. I can use Tandem. Uh, they use this open banking software, so it's linked to my accounts. So I can pay in from other accounts into Tandem and I can pay out from Tandem into those accounts at a moment's notice. It's really quick, it's really easy and at the moment they're paying 4.90%. They were at 5% earlier this year, they've dropped a little bit but 0.10% on what I've got in there doesn't really make any difference to the 5%. So it's still sitting there, it's doing its thing and I flip money almost every day. Um, I make time to do that because that keeps the passive income that I get from interest as an income stream. And I don't really have to do anything for it. Next, uh, pay close attention to even small purchases on your credit card statements. I mean, I check all my accounts anyway. You're looking for any, any payments that you didn't authorize. You're looking for any payments you forgot about, like small auto renews. Look at what you're actually spending. Do you see lots of reoccurring payments to things that you should really not be spending? Like, do you buy a lot on Amazon or eBay? Um, 
do you do a lot of online like other online shopping that you could really cut back on if you can see those names coming up time and time again on your statements cut it out that's a one sure way to waste money have one main investment account and another for short to mid-term projects so as i just said i have my yorkshire building society account i wouldn't say they're projects they are savings amounts but I can lock those away and forget about them and they're earning interest it's passive income and what it means is that because I've got that in a 5% account that means that every year my emergency savings and my car fund is earning 5% interest without me having to add any new money to it it's earning against itself which helps but I also have locked accounts I also now have my pension and I have my stocks and shares ISA for my retirement but I also have my easy access tandem account which always has some money in it for emergencies I can flip money around and it always means that no matter what's going on with my checking accounts and my, uh, my my basic bank accounts there is always a way for me to put extra money in if I need to um, and you know always keep a, a, a small hub of quick easy access money but lock everything else away so that it's earning and so that you're, you're planning your bank accounts and your savings for do I need it now, do I need it in six months, do I need it a year, do I need it in retirement. And that way you can divide up your money but you can still see overall what you have. Uh, and the last point, this is a really good one because I think some people watch some of my videos and get a bit overwhelmed about all the things that I do and that they should be doing everything. Point number seven, most importantly, no, there is no one size fits all approach when it comes to personal finances. This is absolutely it. And as I said, do things gradually. Do it at your own pace. Do what works for you. Do what you can fit into your life. You don't have to do everything. If you don't need a retirement fund, ignore what I say here. If you struggle with different types of accounts that you can't access, don't worry about them. Do what you can. Do what fits into your life and every change, every incremental change is in your favour and it helps your finances. So just setting up an easy access account that has 4.90. If you're, you know, flipping 10, 20 quid a month, it may not be very much, but every penny makes a difference. And you'll see as the numbers go up what a difference that can make. And just knowing that there is money around that you can use if you need to, you have a buffer zone in case something goes wrong, will take some of the stress out of your money. So I hope that's been interesting. I have lots of advice and how-to videos. I will add the playlists at the end and then you can go and have a look and see what else you might be able to fit in with your life. Um, I'm always looking for new ideas as well. I'm always adding and tweaking the way I do things and adding layers. But if you do it gradually over time, it isn't overwhelming. I might have, you know, 15, 20 spreadsheets that I run for my finances, but it's taken a long time. I started off with one spreadsheet. Then I added another one. Then I decided to do a food budget. And then I added other things. So each worksheet within my spreadsheets, um, represents a different element of my finances so I have one that tracks how much my car costs me every year in terms of insurance and repairs and and the service package that I have so I can see that this year my car has cost me the least that it has done on any other year because it's not having work done on it I've got my insurance down a little bit all those sorts of things so it's it just gives you a good overview. It makes it really easy to see what's going on at a moment's notice and you can spot any glaring problems if you need to solve them. So have a look at my other playlists, which I will put here, there and everywhere. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.